Um, <laughs> record. Okay, I think we're recording. All right, you guys. Well, welcome to our career session, career uh, exploration, Red River University, uh, McEwen University, is that correct, Benny? Yep, that's it. We've got Aaron Bennett this morning. We've got Amber Vandenberg, and we've got Eric Senecal. These are all graduates from this program. So thanks to you guys before you start up. Um, and I'll start with Eric this morning. I'll kind of lead you in. Uh, thanks to these guys for taking out their time because uh, they're, they're all busy studying and working. So we appreciate your time, you guys. And uh, we're going to try to wrap this up by 1030. Eric's got to get back into another meeting. So we'll let him start first. Um, Eric, maybe tell these guys a little bit what your, you know, how your Red River programming went. Um, if you could talk a little bit about cost of programming. Sure. What you're doing now and maybe what some of your future plans are. If you could maybe touch base on those <laughs> things, that'd be great. So, okay, cool. That's a loaded question. Thanks. <laughs> um, so I, I graduated back uh, from Sturgeon in 2012, uh, and shortly after that, uh, joined the Red River Graph Design Program. Um, so I did the two-year program, graduated in 2014. Um, it was it was a really good program. So it's been quite quite a long time since I've I've completed that uh, that program, but uh, um, super great experience. Tons of really good learning um super intense you know it's full-time program I, that's what i love about college it's hands-on it's it's a little bit different than um you know some of the university courses that i've taken and different things as well um both super great learning different learning styles what i loved about you know being a creative and, and always wanted to do graph design and just do things with my hands it was really important for me just to to have something that was a little bit more immersive um i you know it would be tough i i think that Right, I feel right now for those that are in school right now um, in a program that, you know, through COVID, um, I, I would imagine there's maybe part of that that is missing a little bit as far as, you know, virtual learning and stuff like that, that um, was a really important thing for, for as far as when I went into college and, and, and um, you know, to be in person. So I, I definitely, I, I couldn't speak to, to how COVID would have changed things. And I know that um, some of the other ones on the call are, are in school right now. So I'd be interested to hear kind of their thoughts around that. But um, I really, really loved, loved the program. It was really good, it was really intense, learned tons of different things. Um, from there, worked a little bit at an agency, uh, at a marketing agency for a little bit, um, then moved into the insurance space. Um, and what's great about the program and, and what's great about kind of, I guess, how I took it is that I was pretty fortunate that I knew what I wanted to do, um, you know, from an early age and, and even just from high school, I always knew I wanted to do something in design. Um, but it's really a career that and it's really a program that allowed me to kind of branch out and do different things. So now I'm, I'm more into the marketing side of things. So I'm a marketing consultant. I'm taking um, finalizing my diploma uh, in marketing from McMaster. So I'm doing online learning right now, um, right now. So, so that should be done in the next year or so. Um, but it really has allowed me to kind of get my foot into the door into a lot of different industries. Um, and having that creative background is, is super important and those hands-on skills. And, and even if it's something that maybe you don't directly go into, I think it's a good kind of a launching pad for a whole different a whole bunch of different things so whether that's entrepreneurship or it's whether it's business so i run a, a side business now and a lot of things that i've learned through design and creative outputs has, has really kind of launched a lot of the different successes within the different ventures so it's it's really interesting um i i now wish that you know maybe i i learned a little bit more about business and 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 financing and sales and all that kind of stuff which i'm picking up now um, I think those are really important aspects just to kind of round you out as, as kind of a, a, an employee and, and whether whatever you go into doing, it's, I think those are really good learnings, but um, yeah. Right on. Um, just to keep you on the line there, Eric. Um, and I want to come back to your McMaster. You said McMaster University, you're yeah. doing online right now? Yeah. That's cool. I, I want to ask you something about that, but can you tell the guys a little bit about your cabin street? They know about it, by the way, because I show them on the Instagram. But can you talk a little bit about 
uh, Cabin Street? Sure, yeah. So it's something we started in 2018 um, just with my business partner and I. And uh, um, it was really just to kind of fit a, a niche um, as far as kind of representing different lake areas in Manitoba. Um, the goal was really just to have something. Um, it actually worked out quite nicely. So, so my business partner, um, very numbers-based, very operational. She's got a, a business degree. Um, so she understands that side of the business and really worked with me to kind of um, build the creative side and the vision. So the way I kind of explain is I do everything basically up until the sale. Um, so I will do all the photography, all the design, all of the output, all that kind of stuff up until um, the client actually goes and pays. <laughs> then uh, my business partner takes care of everything behind the scenes, which is really great. So it, it was really good that I was able to identify skill sets and, and able to. And, and I think that goes further back to what I was saying about how I'm, I'm now rounding out my skills and how my comment about how I wish I maybe spent a little bit more time um, doing some self-learning on business and different sales and different things like that. I feel that I now I'm catching up a little bit on, um, so I've been in, in, in a large organization and I've, I've been picking that up and, and over the last five years uh, through my career, I've, I've, I've learned so many different things that I don't think I would even have ever had the opportunity to learn um, in school without doing those things, which is great. Um, but sometimes you need that formal education just to kind of, you know, have it on the paper. But um, it's uh, it's been a huge learning experience. It's it's starting your own business is is a ton of work. We're three years in, um, and we're super profitable, but we haven't taken taken a penny from it yet. You know, I haven't I haven't paid myself from this business, and I've probably put in thousands of hours, late nights, everything like that. So it's even a successful business like it takes years to to actually grow it and if you want it to be sustainable and you want it to be something that is going to eventually start working for you it's it it takes in the time and, and different work so um yeah it's nice it's nice to see the progress and it's nice that we can actually look through social media right and stay connected which i would say three three to five years ago we just had no idea right um, yeah, so, so that's it, nice. Yeah. It's been really and and like you said with the niche thing, I think that's important for these guys to know that when they graduate, now they can dial into to kind of their interests, sort of, which is uh, it's a neat opportunity, right? So yeah, yeah, you gotta like it's it's tough, right? Because right now I feel, um, especially with COVID, and you know, there's been a lot of positions. Um, so my my job currently my job is changing. Um, I've moved divisions, so I've actually moved through the corporate division. So I'm actually working um, through the Alberta office. Um, so a lot of my, like my boss and all my colleagues work out of Calgary. Um, so it's all remote and things like that, which is a really cool opportunity. It's really neat that, um, you know, meetings like this on Teams, that's, that's I, I've been working with um, quite closely with some of my colleagues for 10 months and I've never met them face to face. Right. So that's just that new reality. Right. It's it's you can totally launch a business completely 100 percent online. You can do all this sort of stuff. And um, it's quite incredible, like the opportunity. And, and it's not about just like and, and having that niche um, is super important. And, and having that one thing, you can't be good at everything. Right. Doesn't mean that you're still going to be in a position where you kind of have to do everything doesn't mean you have to be great at everything, but you need to be able to focus on one thing and, and make sure it's done really well. And whatever that is, and just take those small wins and keep going. Because if you're trying to do everything to everyone and you're just constantly trying to be good at everything, you're not going to be great at anything. And that's what I've, I've kind of learned over the years is that, you know, focus on that one thing, make sure you're the best you can at that. And then everything else kind of do what you got to do around that, right? That's so. good. Yeah, really good advice. Um, okay, and I was going to just, so, oh, quick, sorry, uh, I'll go to Aaron next in, in one minute, um, but before, uh, Eric, um, once COVID is done, hopefully in two weeks, not really, I know that's not going to happen, I thought it was two weeks back in the spring, but, you know, it could be, it could be this spring, it could be the fall, who knows, when that's done, or as we get back to normal, um, are you going to go work with those people or, or could you see this continuing? 
Um, I I don't know. It, it's it's hard, right? I mean, well, I, will it will it be online, a, an online job? Do you think or? Yeah, it, probably. I mean, I still have a, I still have a you know an office, um, here in the city. Um, I still have a desk. I still have, you know, a, a space with my name played on it, and and that's not going to change, and it's still there. Um, just due to capacity and stuff like that, and and the restrictions, I've I've been told that because I can do my job virtually, I've been told that I'm a lowest priority to go back in the office, right? So there's different sales, different things that, um, you know, reception and and facilities, like people that need to, their job is based on a physical space, they need to be there. Um, so with that being said, I, I probably won't go back, and then I I don't think I'll ever go to a full time in office schedule i think i will be doing some sort of mix i'll be doing maybe two days in three days in um whether or not i'm going to go to go out west to to actually meet my team face to face is a whole nother issue i i don't know if that's going to happen i don't know if we'll have the budget um that's the other thing you know just yeah. COVID has hit lots of businesses so i mean some of the one of the biggest spends is travel right so um organizationally wise they're like hey no more travel and we're going to save save that money so that everyone can keep their jobs and the company has been fantastic through it all so that's yeah. good that's yeah. good um and you've been it's given you time to do that online uh mcmaster university too for marketing which is great yeah, yeah. But, uh, so so while covid's restricted us it's, it's created some really cool opportunities so that's yeah. good um okay thanks eric you don't have to run yet you can stick around but I'll stick uh, around for sure. i'm gonna yeah, I might come back to ask you a couple more little questions, but um, Aaron Bennett, who's now attending, or I guess, Aaron, you can talk about your online learning situation. Maybe tell these guys where you go to school, and uh, I might throw in a couple questions as you get going, okay? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so I am in my third year of studies at McEwen University, and uh, that is out of uh, Edmonton, Alberta. So I uh, graduated uh, from Sturgeon in 2017, uh, took a gap year, and then I started at McEwen. And first two years, obviously, were normal. I was uh, staying in residence over there. And uh, then this year hit, and uh, that kind of changed things. So I kind of had to uh, make the decision whether or not I was going to go back to uh, Edmonton and um, sort of do mostly remote, but some classes would be still in person, or if I was going to reduce my course load and take an extra year, hopefully when things are a little bit more stable. And I decided to do that. So I stayed in Winnipeg and this whole year I've been doing remote learning from my university in Alberta. Um, and uh, yeah, and then those in-person courses I, uh, I'll be taking next year. It's, uh, it's technically a three-year program, but I've, I've turned it into four kind of out of necessity. <laughs> And I'm sure a lot of other people have done kind of the same same thing, right? And not just yeah, in your, sure. your program or all across the board. That's probably a common thing. Yeah. <clears throat> right on. Um, do you mind? Uh, so once you're done the four, well, no, actually, can I ask you about the cost of your university, if you don't mind? Yeah. Maybe no, it's some, um, just outline of costs for for what you're doing. Yeah, it's actually, it's a... Uh, it's kind of an interesting situation with my program right now. Um, the program that I'm in is called the Design Studies Diploma, but that program technically doesn't exist anymore <laughs> because McEwen is in the process of, well, I guess technically it it uh, it went into effect last year, but uh, they're still kind of figuring out all the bugs. Uh, now it's called the Bachelor of Design. So through McEwen, you can actually get your uh, your bachelor, but that's not the program I'm in. My year was the uh, was the last one to uh, to be eligible for the diploma. So if you uh, if you look on McEwen's website, if you look into this program at all, you're going to be looking for the bachelor of design, and those costs are going to be a little bit higher than what I uh, am paying because mine's a diploma and now it's a uh, a bachelor, right? So it's a it's a different it's the same program but there's more courses it's kind of a weird situation right now um, so yeah it's a little bit more expensive I guess to get because obviously it's a bachelor program now um, but uh, yeah I mean my plan right now is to uh, 
is to graduate with a diploma and maybe come back for the bachelor, but that all depends on, I guess, cost and whether or not I can find a job. <laughs> right. Okay, that's really helpful. The um, What type of job do you see possibly happening out of this? Um, and, I mean, and that's, that's kind of the million dollar question, isn't it? Like, <laughs> what do you what do you plan to do after university? Uh, I, I really like the idea of working in an agency personally, because I think uh, I would benefit a lot from having other designers around me, sort of more experienced designers that I could, you know, learn from more. So that's kind of where I'm aiming, at least to start out. And it might look a lot different than it did last year, for example, right? You oh, could yeah. be working in that same uh, environment that Eric's working in, um, which might create more opportunity, right? I mean, that mm -hmm. might be, a, that might be, you might be working in a different country, technically. I mean, yeah, that's a good nothing, point. Um, there's nothing, right. There's nothing stopping you guys anymore, right? So, yeah. so yeah, you it is a little knock on more doors, right? You could, you could knock on a door in London, England for, you know, and who knows, maybe, maybe you'd get a shot for an internship or something, right? So, that's right. Yeah. So, yeah. Some pr pretty cool stuff. Um, Aaron, can you tell us a little bit about when you lived in the dorm? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Did not, like, did you go and, like, did they feed you every day? How did that work? <laughs> what did that look like? You know, McEwen's dorms uh, are actually, they're so nice. It's like you each have your own separate bedroom. You have a shared kitchen area, shared bathroom, and every dorm has their own bathroom. So it's not like a shared bathroom for your entire floor and like, you know, one microwave for like 100 people. It's like you have your own space and it's super nice. And honestly, like, I I really like living there. It's a, it's a really cool dorm. Uh, downtown Edmonton, it's like right there. You can take the train. It's like U of A, McEwen, they're really close. So there's, you know, all these university students, like downtown Edmonton is fantastic. Uh, I, I really, I really enjoyed uh, living in residence. It's a, it was a cool place. They didn't feed us though. We had to, we were in charge of feeding ourselves. They had like a meal card program, but you, you did have to, uh, there was no cafeteria. You had to go and feed yourself. Okay, cool. I always, I think about that lots when you think about dorms and that dorm yeah. life. Um, yeah, yeah, kind of kind of paint a room picture, but uh, but McEwen McEwen storms were pretty nice. Yeah, and I I got to see it there a few years ago when you told me you were going. I was there for skills, so I got to do a walk through there, a walk by it, anyways. It oh yeah, you would have you would have seen Allard Hall, I guess. Yes, yeah, it was, it's a long. I mean, it goes for about I don't know, it seemed like a couple kilometers, probably not that long, but it's big. <laughs> Um, the last thing, Aaron, uh, I had something I was going to ask you. Uh, I can't remember now. Um, what, what, I guess with a lot of people in Winnipeg, they're going to say, well, if I'm going to do post-secondary, I might go to Red River, MITT, or U of M, U of W. What made you pick, uh, McEwen? Um, well, I mean, it was it was less like I really like uh, the I really like the design studies program. I, I, you know, obviously did my research and I was looking through it and I, uh, I really, um, really enjoyed the program. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of like a lot of stuff in that program is stuff you could learn at Red River or MITT. And I think the the big draw for me for like leaving Winnipeg and going to Edmonton was like was that was leaving Winnipeg and going to Edmonton. Uh, you know, I really benefited from sort of just like getting out there and it really helped, I think, you know, to just sort of throw myself into the deep end of the pool uh, in, in a sense, you know, like it's a city I've never lived in before. I don't know anyone. I've got like a, a little bit of extended family out there. So I wasn't like completely without a lifeline if I really needed it, but it was kind of just like, you know, it was like, okay, this is it. We're just going to, you're just going to toss yourself uh, two provinces over and it's a sink or swim situation. You got to feed yourself. You got to take care of, you know, classes. You've got to, you know, it's like all this sort of responsibility was just kind of like, plus, you know, going to school and McEwen's program is, uh, is really solid. Like I, I really enjoyed, um, well, I mean, everything about it. They've got uh, really good photo studios out there. They're, you know, really they're, they're building onto the program all the time. Um, and it kind of 
not really <laughs> stringing together a coherent sentence, but I really do like my program. And uh, it's really opened, you know, sort of broadened my horizons in terms of like what design I like to do. And so I think it was really the draw of going to McEwen and leaving Winnipeg was just the, I guess the, the overall growth that it would allow me. So I think, yeah, if you're considering not necessarily even going to McEwen, but just like leaving Winnipeg in general, just cause you like want to broaden your, broaden your horizons or whatever. I think it's a, it's a worthwhile experience if you have the means. Yeah, that's great. Well, thanks for the, the explanation, the overview. Um, <laughs> it's nice to get out and kind of, like you said, challenge yourself to, to get out there on your own. Right. That's, mm -hmm. I think something all of us at that young age kind of want to do or experience. So very cool. Uh, thanks, Aaron. I'm going to switch over to uh, Amber next. Guys, Amber is, uh, well, you guys know it, Jessica's sister. Uh, Amber, you're in your second year at Red River, yes? Yeah, second year, uh, last year, yeah. And you're also at Piney Ridge Cycle? <laughs> White Pine, yes, what White you? Pine Bicycle Co. <laughs> Say that again? White Pine Bicycle Co. That, that's it, I always forget. I always have to ask <laughs> Jessica. Um, Fair enough. Yeah, Amber, if you don't mind uh, telling everybody a little bit about what what are you doing right now? Like, how's things, how's everything going? Yeah, yeah. So, sort of a bit about my story. Like, I graduated in 2018, uh, and then I took a gap year. Uh, during my gap year, I worked a lot, did a lot of freelance work. Um, and then after that, I decided to go to um, Red River for graphic design. Uh, I was kind of debating back and forth where I, whether I was going to go to Toronto for like film school or like Vancouver, but uh, ended up uh, deciding to go for graphic design at Red River, like try it out and stuff. And uh, of course, the half of the last year was uh, in person. It was super cool. Uh, Red River's got a really nice space up there. Uh, you're on offices and the first year's really hands on work. So it was really good that COVID didn't happen right then. But uh, <laughs> Uh, I had always been like a like a designer, not really an artist. And uh, I think Red River kind of brought me more into the artist world uh, than design. It kind of taught me a lot more of my illustration skills and stuff like that really, uh, yeah, challenged me with that. <laughs> um, and then COVID hit and um, we were all um, brought online and um, the job I had previously uh, disintegrated with COVID because you couldn't, uh, I worked at Lush, that's where I was, so you can't really do that <laughs> virtually, but uh, it really brought me some uh, new opportunities. So uh, I started out as a social media manager at White Pine by Spoko. Um, I've been I've been doing social media for a few different places. I did social media for Lush, uh, did some social media for the Assiniboine Chamber of Commerce, and um, just by knowing people, um, networking is super important, guys. <laughs> uh, I got can the I, job. Can at, I... uh, Oh. Can I pause you right yeah, there? Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, it's so it's so important because I think sometimes they say I, I think I think at a younger age there's a hard time discerning the difference for social media as an opportunity opportunity versus social media as a, a marketing or a, a mm -hmm. just an, a career opportunity. So that's yeah. a really cool thing you're talking about. Sorry, keep keep going. Yeah. No, like, yeah, social media, there's a lot of opportunities there, uh, especially, like, with working with other people, like, uh, at White Pine, one of the things we just did uh, a little while ago is we worked with Milksmith, I don't know if anybody knows that ice cream shop in Corden, uh, we brought uh, six pink bikes out from, like, size, like, for toddlers all the way to adults, and we set up this beautiful shot, this beautiful shot took, like, an hour to set up, uh, took it, and uh, people loved it. It's great. And now we're going to be doing collaborations with them. Like, it's really fun, uh, social media, because, like, you just work with a lot of people, a lot of uh, different businesses that aren't necessarily your own. Uh, and it's a really cool way to also expand um, who you know and uh, what you know. You can learn so much. Um, but, yeah, social media, it's really cool. <laughs> um, can, I, so, yeah. can I, oh, I yeah. sorry, I'm going to jump in. Are you... Are you a part-time worker there? Are you a full-time worker? What, what do you consider yourself? Yeah, so technically I'm part-time right now. Uh, I would be full-time if I wasn't in school, but uh, right now part-time. Uh, I've been moved up to like assistant manager, so I also design stuff for the company and uh, just oversee things. So uh, I also design like we have different divisions at White Pine. So we have like our paddleboard division, we got scooters, uh, and we're also branching off into some other things that we're working on. But uh, like right now for paddle boards, I've been designing paddle boards and uh, we're working with uh, manufacturers in China right now uh, to get those created. Yeah, so uh, my job, I do a little bit of everything and uh, I've also been, I, I work a lot in like branding uh, and logo making. That's uh, kind of where I specialize in. Uh, so I've been doing that a lot with White Pine. We've been uh, 
uh, kind of solidifying branding because it hasn't really been done uh, <laughs> in the past eight years. It's just kind of past hands and nobody's like really gone through and been like, okay, White Pine, this is who they are. This is how they talk. This is their uh, aesthetic. And we have to do that for each of the brands. So that's kind of what I do there. Uh, but I also do a lot of business at White Pine. So um, with the new businesses we're creating right now, like um, I work with other uh, businesses in like the States and we do like wholesale and stuff like that. So I work with a lot of them um, just getting inventory in, getting inventory out. And uh, this year with COVID, it's been super weird. I started there and I worked at a bike store with no bikes because we couldn't get bikes in. Uh, so that's why we diversified our product line. So uh, working at White Pine has definitely taught me a lot about uh, the business end and uh, it's really valuable information. And that's why uh, graphic de design is such a cool industry to be in because like it branches off into everything. Like if you find something that you like to do, there's a way to also incorporate graphic design into it. Like there's something in graphic design that you can find that you love like there's uh there's not a dead end when it comes to graphic design is what i've learned uh, through all this yeah <laughs> that's awesome yeah. uh it's it's nice that I, I think you and eric both talked about the business side of things which has become such a big uh important part um, also networking which is really important i think that's something that you definitely a skill if you don't have after graduation you definitely learn it quick right <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, you guys would know that best, just getting out there and moving around. Um, another quick question, Amber. So mm -hmm. you're working, you're working your uh, online at, at Pine, White Pine, and you're also doing the online. How are the two together working out? Are you managing that okay? Uh, so White Pine, I am in person still, just because the industry oh. I'm in, I need to work with the mechanics to understand, like when I'm, uh, so I do a lot of the website stuff too, so I need to understand the specs on that, and I can't necessarily know that without seeing, like, the parts of a wheel, or, like, the frame, and, like, what it's made out of. So, like, with my industry, it's a little bit different. I need to be there to see what's kind of going on. Uh, sometimes I can work from home and do, like, certain website things or, like, answer emails, but uh, got to be kind of there for more uh, stuff. But the okay. one thing I do love is with school, having it online, it means that I can work a job. Uh, like, Red River is a very uh, dense program. It's basically four years put into two, uh, and they don't recommend you work well in the program. But because things are online, it's a lot more easy to manage things. Uh, time management is another really important thing, guys. <laughs> Uh, but if you can do time management well, like you can live your life, go to school and uh, work. And that's what I've been doing. And uh, I've been benefiting from it quite well. And it's nice to be working in my industry before graduation. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> definitely. It's uh, it's been a game changer, right? So it's it's definitely a positive. Um, OK, that that is awesome. You guys have kind of answered a lot of my other questions. I was going to save till the end. Um, if you don't mind me asking, Amber, how much should a student on a two-year graphic design program expect to pay? I need to ballpark this. Yeah, if like your first you year is going to be a lot more but just because you have to buy uh, the computer and stuff like that. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, like, like. 10 grand? I don't know, something like that. Around yeah, I think, I think I paid... I was about 12 grand, uh, 12 or 13 grand, but that included like my rent because I was living in oh. the city. Um, so I was about a thousand. Yeah. Yeah. I would say like for like straight tuition, like if you had a computer, like you could do it for a little bit cheaper. Um, I don't know about you, Amber, but like there was a couple textbooks that I skipped out on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which, <laughs> you can almost always find a PDF of the textbook. That's all you need, yeah. Guys. I, I'm you not, can I'm almost not, always find, but exactly. yeah, yeah. Don't, 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 don't tell you know. that. <laughs> wink, wink, <laughs> nudge, nudge. <laughs> um, but I know, I know for a fact too. Like even, and I don't know if you've experienced Amber, but but right now in the course that I am, um, I could have bought the three hundred dollar physical textbook, or I could have rented it for six months for fifty dollars, right? So, um, because my work was paying for it, I, I opted for that route um, just to kind of cut some 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 fees there, so I could even take more courses, but. Um, I, I think there's probably some some options there, um, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I would say 10 grand, five five to six grand a year. You know, your first one's going to be a little bit more for sure. But. I talked to these guys about uh, Manitoba Institute of Trades and Technology, and it's it's a nice, I think it's a nice option for them if they're not 100% on the Red River or maybe if they're di design skills or maybe they're more hands-on. 
Um, but it's about 5,000 to go to MITT. I'm not asking you guys for any feedback on that. I'm just putting that out as information. Um, I mean, I have a little bit for the MITT thing or any school, really. Yeah, it's, go, not go my, uh, yes. it's not really where you go. It's what you can do with it and what you take from your program. That is like 100% um, what I would say. Like I could have gone out and uh, gone to another province, but uh, personally, I'm like pretty glad I stayed. And uh, yeah, like just learn everything you can. Like don't um, pass off opportunities and uh, just really like dive into it and uh, it's what you can do with it. That's that's the main thing. Okay, really good point, right? It's, it doesn't really matter where you go in the end, right? It's how how much commitment. Now, I, we had a question from, not from this class, but another grade 12 last year, last week, as Mr. Rogway said, do I need to go to a university or Red River or design? Can I just try and jump into the business? What, did, what are you guys thoughts on that? Maybe, uh, Maybe Eric and then Benny and then Amber, you guys could, you know, what do you tell a kid who says, I'm not going to go to school. I just want to try it. What do you, what do we say to that? Uh, go ahead, Eric. I have to go first. Um, I, I don't know that that's, that that's tough, right? Because I, I think, you know, even like you even look at so many of these, multi-millionaire you know youtube vloggers and you've got all of these entrepreneurs that never went to school they dropped out of school and they they had success so to to really blanket and say you can't do what you love and and have success without going to school or anything um i i don't think that's fair i i think that can you do it absolutely um you know people do it all the time there there's so many people that do it um in certain instances, um, I, I think you do need some education and it, it does help you get your foot in the door. And I think it's 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 really a good service to yourself to invest into yourself, to grow those those skills and hone in and 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 really find your niche. Right. Because um, school school teaches you a lot about even what do you want to do? Like, do you want to go into something that's more production, more of the printing side of it, more of the technical kind of output side of design let's say if we're going to talk specifically about design or do you want to go more the creative direction you want to do maybe you want to do more of the social media like those are the kind of stuff that I, I think you can learn when you're just doing stuff and you kind of get your feet jump in kind of feet first but um i think it's it's really important to if anything take time to invest in yourself to figure out what you want to do um especially if you're only you know 19 years old or 18 years old like it's pretty unrealistic to think you know exactly what you want to do and you're going to know what business and what you're going to want to do to be successful and it's going to take time so um to me uh school is really important for me uh, just for self-development and, and to invest in myself um it was something that was always on my radar um, it's maybe how i was brought up too like my dad you know wasn't gonna really support me if i didn't go to school so for me it made sense to you know say hey listen i i if you go to school, don't worry about money. We'll, we'll help you. You know, obviously I worked every summer and I saved a ton of money, but um, there was a level of support from my family. So it was a no brainer for me. Like I had the opportunity so it, to take it, but um, I don't know. I, I can't really answer that, that question because there's so many people that have would prove that you don't need to go to school. Um, but then there's so many success cases of, of people going to school as well. So uh, I think it's, it's, if you have the opportunity, just make sure that you're investing in yourself, whatever that is, right? So. Awesome, that's an awesome answer. Thanks, Eric. Benny, any thoughts on, uh, I mean, you guys are all going to school, which is which is great, um, but any feedback for anybody who's saying, well, maybe I'm not gonna go to school or I am, or, you know, especially during COVID, maybe what's some good advice for that yeah. person? Yeah, no, absolutely. It's a, uh, it's definitely a question that uh, that came up a lot uh, when I was thinking about going to school. It's like, well, you know, there's all these online programs that are way cheaper than going to university. So, like, you know, why even bother? Why even bother going to school when you can just, you know, pay for like Lynda.com or Skillshare or whatever, and like, you know, you can get the same skills and it's way cheaper. And I think uh, the answer that I would give to that is uh, just like there's an environment to learning in a classroom and having peers and having like mentors that are designers in the industry that you can like talk to one-on-one -on -one 
that you just can't get if you uh, if you just dive right in or if you're taking classes solo and online, like uh, through an online program. Obviously, we're all online right now. But um, yeah, no, I think one of the biggest benefits of going to university is uh, that you're like constantly surrounded by peers. You can you know, you're forming connections. It's like you're networking. Like Amber was saying before, networking is super important. And it's like you're networking like right from day one because your classmates are, you know, potential future coworkers, potential future bosses. You know, maybe they start, they have their own agencies one day and you're working with them or for them. And so I think really forming connections because uh, graphic design is a super interconnected uh, industry. You know, everyone knows each other. The, the longer I've stayed, in Edmonton, the more I've realized that like everyone knows each other. And I think uh, being a part of that network, if you're looking to find jobs and you're looking to form connections, especially if you're looking to do freelance, you have to be able to network, you have to be able to form connections with people. And I think uh, going to university is a uh, super beneficial thing to like know people and like, <clears throat> you know, be, um, be sort of aware of opportunities. And um, I don't know how it is at Red River, but um, sometimes uh, different agencies or people looking for graphic design in Edmonton will send job postings to um, the, uh, like the program manager for the program I'm in and she will pass them along to students. So like sometimes job offers will just get sent to my inbox through McEwen's program. So it's like, it's really the idea of like, you know, obviously you have those credentials, but like really in an in industry like graphic design, it's it's what you can do over like, what piece of paper you have, right? So, you know, if your portfolio is really strong, then, you know, it's like a lot of people aren't, don't, you know, wouldn't look twice at, you know, my diploma versus a bachelor. Um, so I think really uh, the benefit to going to university is, yeah, just building those connections and figuring out who's who in the industry and really, you know, on top of being able to hone your skills is, uh, yeah, just, yeah, getting to know people. <laughs> Yeah, the connections are so important. It's kind of your platform or your springboard to the next step, right? So, mm -hmm. excellent. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. Uh, Amber, I'll go to you next. Just some feedback for anybody who's not sure what they want to do next year or some advice. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Like, you can definitely not go to university or like anything like that or college. But the thing is, you got to take in mind is how dedicated you're going to be and how hardworking you're going to be, because you can definitely do it without going to school. But it's really if you have that discipline to do it, that that's what school gives you is that like foundation for like discipline. And uh, that's what I really like about school is very structured and whatnot. But that being said, like my boss went to Asper for business and ended up dropping out. He never finished uh, just because his business was doing so well. Um, but he does kind of wonder what would have happened if he did just went uh, go and finish that off. Um, and I know with me too, even this year, I was like, oh, do I do I take a gap year because of COVID and whatnot? And uh, I'm glad I kept going through with it and uh, I'll finish it off. Uh, but with continuing education, like next year, I'm planning on going to U of uh, W for the Faculty of Arts, uh, just because I want to learn more of the technical side of like writing and stuff like that, uh, kind of develop those skills a little bit better just because I don't think college has been able to ta uh, teach me those ones uh, as much. Um, but uh, yeah, I would just say keep learning in any way you can, uh, whether you go to school or not, but really like take into, con the, into consideration like how dedicated you would be if you weren't uh, going into a structured program. I think that's uh, kind of what you need to focus on or uh, think about more so. Yeah. Yeah, that's um. Terrific feedback. I'm just going to say, um, has COVID allowed you, so next year you're going to keep going with an art degree. Fine arts or art? Uh, art. Uh, art, yeah. so get a Bachelor of Arts. Uh, and so because of COVID, is that an opportunity you have that you may not have had before? Yeah, like I'm, I'm hoping still everything's going to be online. I really like the online learning. It, it just helps me because it helps me with uh, not having to move back and forth um like transportation wise it just cuts a lot of time out of my day that i can go and do work uh i really like to work that's like one of my things <laughs> but uh, i mean yeah. and that's that's the goal right out of school is eventually you got to work so mm -hmm. the acceptance that work is good and you're gonna do it and it pays the bills i mean that's that's super important so mm -hmm. yeah yeah 
Okay, do you guys have any questions? Yeah, these guys, I, I got a lot of, we got a lot of information today, so uh, <laughs> that was awesome. I wrote down my little cheat sheet, but I think we've covered everything. Um, I, like I said, I'll, I'll just kind of wrap up, but if you guys, if there's anything else, you guys just jump in. Uh, I know you guys got to go, try and wrap up in one.